Hey everybody and a warm welcome back to Talk Norris City. I hope you guys are all doing very well indeed. It's Saturday but there's been no football today. There's been no Norris City today so maybe Saturdays felt a little bit different for you. So I thought I'd come back. We talk Norris City. We talk football just to try and instill a bit of um, football with it within us because I know uh, that there's been a bit of EFL action hasn't hasn't there and there's been a bit of international stuff but the main thing Nerve City not today I've almost forgotten what it felt like um, not to be winning on a Saturday but next Friday we'll be back to winning ways against Preston a big thank you to Oliver he's already chipped in with a super chat thank you so much Oliver great to see you and great to have you all um, involved on this Saturday evening nine o'clock I've got myself a little wine. The Lakens is chilled for later on. I'm going to start with the wine and then we'll see where the evening takes us. Um, and tonight we're going to be talking about attackers that we might want to sign. And I've really enjoyed this little mini series, actually. Thanks to the guys at Five Yards for sponsoring it. Um, I know a lot of you have really been enjoying using Five Yards. Um, the link is in the, in the description if you want to head over there. Learn what five yards is yourself i'll give you a brief explainer it's essentially a, an online scouting network where you can really delve into the up and coming players um, many are involved at norris city many we've played against this season and then um you know the likes of neymar and mbappe and and all of them kind of people but i've really enjoyed just delving into players that um, maybe you guys have mentioned that norris city should be looking at or maybe players I've just wanted to learn more about. It's been a really nice educational tool for me. So head over to Five Yards. You can get involved over there. Um, they've been really kind to me. So I'd, I'd really appreciate it if you guys gave them a look. But tonight we're going to be talking about, um, about attackers and who we think might complement Norris City if we were to go up to the Premier League, which does look likely. I uh, just want to... Um, just want to pull this comment up from Greg. It's good to see you, Greg. Hope you're well, mate. Um, Wes Houlihan, question mark. Oh, <laughs> probably not coming back to Norwich City, but I, I just tweeted actually how much joy I've taken from him absolutely ripping it up at Cambridge today. A, a really nice assist um, from, from Wes today in the last minute to get Cambridge a really important win. And it looks like they'll um, be getting promoted out of League Two. So it could well be... Wes Houlihan against Ipswich Town next season um, because Ipswich aren't going anywhere and it looks like Cambridge United might be getting promoted from League Two into League One, which would be absolutely brilliant. And James is also uh, delighted with Wes's performance today. Watching Wes was big enough um, for me today. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Jen, good to see you. I hope you're, I hope you're good. Um, OK, let's get into things then. We've gone through defenders and we've gone through midfielders in previous episodes. And I'm already starting to see, actually, some comments um, of players you'd like to see at Norwich City who I've actually picked out and will feature in tonight's episode. I've got four attacking players. Um, we've usually gone for three. I've pushed the boat out tonight. We're going to go for four. And we're going to start with the man who was in the thumbnail. This bloke, Harvey Elliott. Um, the most expensive um valued player we we featured on this little mini series 49 million pounds harvey elliott is being rated at on five yards 17 years old and already ripping up in the championship um we all know about harvey elliott i haven't picked someone out here who you know no one's ever heard of he's certainly not obscure he came into the limelight a couple of years ago as a 15 year old at fulham liverpool took him on um, made a couple of appearances at, at, at Liverpool and has already made a big impact on the championship this season at 17. I was very surprised actually not to see him start for Blackburn when we played them last week. Um, but his underlying data is, has been absolutely phenomenal. And as well as being the most valuable player uh, that we've featured so far, he's also got the most potential. 72 rated now, 91 potential. Now, let me give you a quick spin through how five yards rate things. Um, as you can see there, a 91 rating would nearly take him to world class, uh, certainly well within the Champions League bracket. And 72 rated now at 17 is pretty much in the Premier League. So this is a man who will probably go to the very top of the game if his progression continues at the rate which people expect. Now, of course, Norris City won't sign 
Harvey Elliott. Uh, we don't have £50 million to be playing around with. But a loan signing could be of interest for both parties here because he's done well at championship level this season. Yes, he hasn't featured week in, week out, but his creativity and his chances created has been right up there. Let's look at his attributes. I mean, look at that, all curving towards sort of the finishing speed and dribbling characteristics, creativity looking really strong, passing looking really strong. I mean, all areas of that looking fairly well developed for a 17-year-old. Certainly, the, the finishing and dribbling aspects of his game look really, really good. Um, I just like, I, I look at Harvey Elliott and think, Farker can be trusted with lone players. We've, we've proven that before. You, you only have to look at um, Oliver Skip this season. A good relationship with Jurgen Klopp. Could, uh, could, could a Premier League loan deal be the next step for Harvey Elliott in a, in a team that will be playing, you know, fast, flowing, passing football? It just seems to suit Harvey Elliott so well, um, which I think would, would work wonders for both us and also um, Elliott and also uh, Liverpool as well. Uh, good to see a lot of you agreeing with me, actually. Um <laughs> Uh, with, with, with Harvey Elliott, um, which is good. So that's the first player. You can you can let me know um, which players you're you're most interested in. Come the end of this video, we've got three more to get through. So Harvey Elliott up first. Next up, and I've seen this man mentioned quite a few times actually, and it's Michael Elise um, of Reading. Some people say Elise, some people say Elise. Um, I say Elise. Nineteen years old winger. Um, of course, at Reading this season. Now, I didn't know about Michael Elise until this season, really, um, as many people didn't. I've watched a lot of Elise this season. Um, I've been really impressed with Reading, actually. And I know we give Reading a bit of stick for being Tim Pot, but I didn't expect them to sustain um, the form that they set early on in the season. Of course, they won, was it their first six or seven games? They were top of the league for a little while. Um, they have tailed off a little bit since then, but I thought they'd be in sort of mid-table mediocrity at this point but it looks as if they'll get into the playoffs and Elise is a man that has, has helped them get to that point um this is how he's he's rated up on um on five yards 69 rated now with a potential of 83 um just one more reminder that would kind of take him to near enough champions league level if he fulfills his potential um kind of in between premier league and championship level at the moment with all of the um, episodes i've done so far defence, midfield and attack, I've tried to concentrate on players that I think fit the Farker mould. Young, something to prove, hungry. I think I think Harvey Elliott's got that because he's eventually wanting to break into the Liverpool team and he'll need to prove that he can play Premier League football. Elise, he's done it in the Championship. Can he go to that next step? Still very young, um, of course. And, and, and a lot of these players will be kind of raw but we've seen over the years with Daniel Farker that he's he's got that ability to develop um, these types of players. So many people loving the look of, um, of, of Elise C pieces. What a player. Snap him up now. Um, lots of people actually um, saying about Reading players. And, and I think that real exciting kind of attacking football that, that Reading have played this season obviously shows that the attackers are on people's radar. Um, Craig, good to see you. Uh, Norwich signed Johnson Clark Harris, Harris scored 22 goals for Peterborough. Yeah, I think he's got a hat-trick today, didn't he? Um, Clark Harris doing brilliantly. The thing with Peterborough, they've always been able to produce good attacking players because they just create so many chances. Um, Ivan Tony was at Peterborough, wasn't he? A Somba Longa back in the day. Um, Dwight Gale, like players that will be playing, if not have already played Premier League football, have come through Peterborough. Um, Johnson, Clark, Harris will probably probably be the next. The thing with Peterborough as well, though, is because they've got this track record of producing really good attacking players, they demand top prices as well. I mean, Ivan Tony, yes, he scored a, a hat full of goals this season. That comes at a premium um, when you've got a, a proven track record. Let's have a quick run through Elise's scout report then of five yards. Um, an attacking midfielder with intelligence who provides creativity to the team, drives the team forward, progressing the ball quickly and setting the tempo for the attacking approach. Uh, a technically gifted player who will look to drive the team forwards, breaking the lines and pulling opponents out of position 
very direct in his play and progressing the ball forwards quickly, create, creating opportunities for his teammates. I like the sound of that. A man who can get the ball forwards quickly with, with tempo. And I think that's something we've lacked kind of in between the midfield and attacking elements. And that's why I love watching Marco Stieberman play because he has the ability to pick the ball up deeper than maybe a number 10 would often and, and really push the ball forwards. Elise, I think, has got a bit more technical ability than a Marco Stieperman, but has that willingness to really kind of drive forward. So that's what stood out for me. Harvey Elliott and Elise so far um, as two attackers I'd really like to bring in. Kind of tricky wingers, attacking midfielders. The next player, and I've already seen a lot of you mention him in the comments, is an out-and-out -out goal scorer, and he goes by the name of Adam Armstrong. 24 years old, um, at Blackburn Rovers, another at Blackburn. Of course, Harvey Elliott's there this season. Um, five yards rating him as a £15 million striker. Uh, I was actually surprised that Armstrong was only 24 because it feels as if he's been a around for a long while. I remember watching him at Coventry score, uh, you know, tons of goals. Um, and of course, he's done so at Blackburn um, this season. It was a big miss for them not having Armstrong when they played us um, last week. This is how... Um, five yards kind of rate him, rated as a 72 player now with a 78 potential. Actually, one of the smallest gaps in terms of where he's at now and potential, probably because he's one of the older players we've picked out in this series. You look at Elise and, and Harvey Elliott, neither of them have reached um, 20 yet. Armstrong, 24, nearing his peak, you would have thought. But Armstrong's next step in his career is a Premier League move. Like he's shown he can do it in League One. He's shown he can do it in the Championship. Can he do it in the Premier League? I think the worry with Armstrong is he does shoot an awful lot from positions that you would maybe not expect him to score. Like his shock, the, the amount of shot, the, the shot volume, that's what I want to say he's had this season is, is absolutely outrageous in terms of how many he's had. Um, and he's very different to a, to a sort of a Timu Puki type. This is how they uh, he kind of reads on on one um, on five yards. Um, Centre forward, clinical goal scorer, plays on the shoulder of the last defender, out and out goal scorer, solid link up play with shades of Jamie Vardy. I mean, my goodness, if he's anything like Jamie Vardy, of course, came through the lower ranks of English football, then you've got a player on your hands. We all know what Adam Armstrong's like. I love a striker that that just almost hangs on the on the shoulder of the defender. Timmy Pukki does it brilliantly. I do almost see Armstrong and Pukki as similar kind of forwards. The movement's there. Um, the willingness to get in behind defenders is there. Armstrong's just got, you know, five or six years on, on Timmy Pukki, who we know Pukki has done it in the Premier League. Can he do it again? Probably, probably can. But we, we, we need another striker. Um, that's for sure. Lots of people have mentioned Callum Wilson. Um, from Newcastle as well. We nearly signed Callum Wilson, didn't we? Um, back when he was at Coventry. I think it was kind of between him and, and Lewis Graben, and we went with Graben in the end. And that wasn't, I mean, think what you want of Lewis Graben, but he scored a lot of goals for us and important goals as well. Could we get Callum Wilson? I mean, a Newcastle going down? It's not looking great, is it? He could be an option. The, the thing with a Callum Wilson is... Yeah. You, you're probably paying a lot of money for a Callum Wilson and, and you would be paying a lot for an Adam Armstrong or someone. But if Blackburn don't go up again this season, and they won't be going up. They're too far off the playoffs. Um, I don't think they can probably demand the money that they were demanding the summer just gone. I think they were quoting like 20, 25 million for, for Adam Armstrong. They're not going to be able to do that again because if, if you deny a player a, a Premier League move when you're in, a, uh, in the championship, you know, things start turning. So... Maybe a Callum Wilson. I think my worry, as Danny said here, um, the wages might be too much. And, and that's something you have to bear in mind, isn't it? When you go into the Premier League and you're maybe signing players who have been in the Premier League and also who have been at big clubs. Newcastle can afford to pay 40, 50, 60, 70 grand on players. Norwich could afford it, but as we've seen in the past with the Stephen Naismiths and the Umbacanis of the world, you know, demolishing the, the wage structure isn't necessarily a, a beneficial thing to do. So Harvey Elliott, Michael Elise, Adam Armstrong, and the final one, 
is this man, Adamola Lookman, who I'm sure all of you are aware of, 23 years old, um, rated as a £25 million player on five yards. These are the um, ratings for him, 81 rated now with a potential of 86. And this is the overview. Winger, forward, um, dribbler, lots of assists and goals with shades of Carlos Tevez. I love that little bit on five yards, the shades of. Who does this player remind you of? Carlos Tevez, what a joyful player he was to watch. I really like the look of Lookman, actually. Um, I think out of all four of these, the player least likely to, to join Norwich City and least um, like a Daniel Fark player, whatever a Daniel Fark player is. But I just wanted to throw Lookman in there because I've seen quite a few of you um, mention him. And I've, I saw him on five yards and, and a lot of people are raving about him. And I think there's a really good future for Lookman there. Um, with all of these players, though, it's you're on such fine margins of, of progression, aren't you? Because it, all it takes is a bad season and suddenly you're almost off the radar. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but look at Jamal Lewis, one of you know England's brightest um, talents in terms of playing in England. Um, and then suddenly, you know, eight bad months at Newcastle and not necessarily his performance is just a team in general. No one's talking about Jamal anymore, um, which is a real shame. A real shame. Um, Simon says, how much um, of a total transfer budget do you think we'll have with no players sold? I mean, that's, that's a great question. I've, I've said in these episodes um, that I've kind of set a £75 million trans, transfer budget, which, which sounds utterly outrageous. Um, but my thinking behind that is, we're probably going to sell either an Emmy, a Max or a Todd, maybe two, maybe three. You you just don't know. And, you know, Todd and um, sorry, Emmy and Max certainly worth 40 million each. And Norwich will be demanding at least that if they don't get that fee, they won't be selling. It's as simple as that. Um, so say 40 million pound comes in from player sales. You're already spending Eight million on Gibson, seven million on um, your new list, and possibly three million on Kintia. So that's twenty million quid. Um, so you've then maybe got sixty million pounds of potential spending money. Um, and then I, I just see Norwich City really wanting to go for it this time, um, and not as in a go for it with signing Stephen Naismith and Leroy Fair and players like that, as in a going for it with a really strategic recruitment method. And, and Stuart Weber and Kieran Scott and the, and the scouts will have learned lots from the last time we got promoted. And I think we'll already have a short list of, um, you know, a top, top money signing and working their way down. I think they'll have that list. And I think they'll be looking at different people this time than we maybe did last time. I mean, it's almost laughable, our approach to Premier League Um to the Premier League last time. We spent 350 grand and expected to stay in the league. I mean, it's ridiculous. And, and the 350 grand was spent on Sam Byram, who they knew and we knew was injury prone and, and has been proved right. And then we kind of just went very anti Weber and, we, and was throwing, you know, resource at Duda. And I mean, Lucas Roops turned out okay, but, you know, wasn't going to keep us in the Premier League. So, I don't think the recruitment can be worse than, than the last time um, we got into the Premier League. Uh, Declan, here he is. Good to see you, my friend. Um, maybe Josh King. Not not screaming out as a potential signing, Declan, but I like your, I like your thinking. I think it's a fascinating um, kind of summer for, for Norris City in terms of the, the types of player we go for, because... You look back, don't you, at, at previous big Norwich City signings, and I can't remember more excitement for a player than Stephen Naismith. It was a player we'd sniffed around for a long while. We finally got him big money, had scored, um, I think, a hat-trick for Everton not so long back, came in, scored a goal in his debut against Liverpool. There was massive excitement around Stephen Naismith, and it just didn't work out. And he was a proven Premier League goal scorer um, and a proven Premier League player. The players that have worked best for us, Puki, Stieperman, Vrancic, are players who weren't proven um, and were just the right fit. And 
often it will be players that we maybe have never heard of or have only seen, you know, watching Sky Sports News at a strange hour. Often it's not the Harvey Elliott. So although I'm picking these players out and I think they kind of fit, it could it it could very well be someone completely different. Uh, Philip, good to see Philip's been using five yards. Of course, our, our sponsors of this little mini series up there. Up there. They're John Ruddy's gloves. No, they're Angus Gunn's gloves up there. They're John Ruddy's. Mark Tierney shirt and a Todd Catmull shirt, if you were wondering. You probably weren't. Um, five yard scoring Pookie is a 75. Cantwell 75. Buendia 78. Aaron's 73. Three. Let's have a look at this at the ratings again. So that would put all of them um, as Premier League players, basically. Um, and I'm assuming Aaron's. I'm surprised Aaron's is that low as a 73. Actually, um, give him a few games back in the Premier League, and that will shoot up um, for sure. Joel, I'm always available on a free left wing. Uh, me and you both, Joel. I'm not a left winger. I'm a right back, but um, I'm free. I will I will pay my own money to pay for Norwich City if they're that desperate. Um, <laughs> Simon, we tend to have more luck with bargains, just tougher to find. This is spot on. I think they were having this discussion on Five Live the other day with um, Mark Chapman, and they were talking about Leicester's approach in the transfer market. And the difficult thing for, for, for football clubs, and, and they were using Riyad Mahrez, as an example for Leicester, they signed him for like 350 grand or something and sold him for 30 odd million. And they had got a brilliant couple of seasons about him. The problem is, is when you get into the Premier League or in Leicester's case, have kind of gone from a team trying to just survive into the Premier League into title winners and, and now kind of wanting to get into the top four. Before you could get away with signing five bargains and if one of them works you're laughing and you could look at Norwich City's recruitment as that kind of method over the years I mean for every Emi Buendia there's been a Marcel Franca right and there's there's, there's players that we've forgotten about um what was his name Philip Heiser like players that you you just completely forget about and when you get into the Premier League for every five signings you make four of them have to be bang on so you suddenly have to uh, you, you you have to change your approach slightly because I'm not saying it's a scattergun approach that we've got at the moment, but you can get away with the odd one failing. For every you know Marcus Stiefman, there's a Patrick Roberts. Like some just don't work out, and that's natural. But you you have to start spending money one to show that you've got intent um, and and you want to be competitive, and two because there will be players who are bargains that are going to fail more than you know slightly proven players that will cost you money so that's the that's the difficulty with um with a team like Norwich City who and even like Sheffield United and, and teams like that who've who've built their success for years upon years on bringing through players on freeze and you know hundreds of thousands you then have to go out and start spending 10 million 15 million on players and you have to get them right because unlike a Manchester City, Norwich City do have a finite amount of cash and we can't burn it like, like some clubs can. Uh, Mike, great to see Mike. I cannot wait to get back into Carrow with Mike and have a pint. Um, last time was stated as a free hit ahead of a five-year plan. The club took the money uh, and we went down. This time we have... Um, remnants of that money and the financial boost of this promotion and this has to be a go for gold to make sure we stay i completely agree i completely agree and although i feel like norwich fans on the whole are very accepting and and, and norwich fans are fine if we kind of fail on the pitch if there's a clear plan and, and there was a clear plan and 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 stuart weber said on the tnt podcast didn't he and, and it got a bit of a like oh really kind of reaction when he said yeah it's a free hit it's a complete free hit. And it was because we didn't spend money. The money went to paying off debts. The money went to building Colney. The money went to paying back loans that um, that fans had given the football club. The money went to being able to keep hold of Emi Buendia, Max Aarons, Todd Cantwell. The money went to being able to sign these young, promising players in Aarons and Jamal and Ben on long-term contracts. And then you can sell players on for inflated transfer fees so that money was well spent just not necessarily on the pitch and that was a very left field approach 
for a Premier League club because you never see that happen. You know, money's always spent on the pitch and and on wages and, and, and clubs are kind of don't have the cash, but they just throw everything they've got at it. So Norwich went about things very differently last time. Um, but we can't afford to do it this time. And, and I don't think there's, there will be an acceptance for it this time because this is the, this is the opportunity for Norwich to cement ourselves as a Premier League team now because no one likes, well, I say no one likes it. It's fun being a yo-yo club and we are a yo-yo club. You know, we're bouncing between the Championship and the Premier League as our West Brom, as will Sheffield United will be. Um, but you want to kind of sustain yourself as a Premier League team eventually. And I think this is a, a really good opportunity for Norwich. Lots of people saying Clark Harris and Peterborough. I'm not sure if it's because he's scored a, you know, a hat trick today, but yeah, he looks promising. I, I think the problem with a Clark Harris would be, as I've already said, you'd be paying a lot of money for him and league one to um, the Premier League is a, is a very big step up. Um, a very big step up and players have done it and they will continue to do it but it's a bit of a risk certainly when you know we want we're wanting a goal scorer who will be competing with a team with a team who put in and you're not telling me that Clark Harris is on Pookie's level so um, yeah there we go um, I think we're going to end it there we'll get to we'll get to half an hour let's do a few more minutes let's get a couple more questions in but um, I've given you my players let's give you one quick spin through again and you can tell me which one you'd love out of all of these four Harvey Elliott was number one, 17-year-old from uh, well, his parent clubs, Liverpool, of course, been up uh, on loan at Blackburn this season. Michael Elise of Reading, 19 years old, winger, 24-year-old Adam Armstrong from Blackburn, and 23-year-old Adamola Lookman from Fulham. So Harvey Elliott, Michael Elise, Adam Armstrong, and Adamola Lookman. Um Give me your favourite out of them four. They're my sort of short list who I've, I've scoured through five yards and, and they look the ones reasonably in budget, whether that's on loan or as a permanent and who I think fit Farker's way of playing football. Um, Robert Crane, remember we already have the commitments to spend around 14 million, uh, at least 14 million. Um, so can't level the accusation that we're not spending yet. You're you spot on, Robert. I mean... You know, when we get promoted, it, we have to sign Yanulis and Ben Gibson will sign. And I think there's an option to sign Javi Quintia. Whether we sign him or not, it's a different story. But yeah, th there's at least £14 million pounds of outgoings there before you've started, kind of. Um, we need to replace Oliver Skip. Um, so <laughs> there's probably another £15 million quid there if you want someone even half the level of Oliver Skip. So we will be spending money. And that's scary, but it, it, it has to be done. And at least we've planned for it. And, and hopefully we, we do have the cash. Lots of people say Adam Armstrong, actually. That's surprising. That's surprising. Lots of votes for, for, for Armstrong and Harvey Elliott. OK, well, I'm glad that my my, my picks have, have resonated with you slightly. Um, it's been lovely joining you on this um, on this little transfer mini series we'll call it i've really enjoyed working with five yards if you if you like five yards drop them a tweet they're at um five yards on twitter and say uh, thanks for thanks for supporting talk Norris city because they've been really lovely to me um so that would be absolutely brilliant uh, mystic manson bradley dack if he could stay fit manson what a player bradley dack is but he's done his acl for a second time and i know a few people actually who've, who've done acls and and they say that the rehabilitation from your first one's draining enough. I can't imagine what he's going through to try and rehabilitate himself for a second ACL. I mean, that's another year out. I feel really sorry for Bradley Dak because I think I think there's a Premier League player in there. But, I mean, you feel unlucky having done it once. To do it twice is just desperate, isn't it? It, it really is. Um, really is. Anyway, whatever you're up to this evening, um, I hope you enjoy it. We'll be back next week, of course. Norwich are back in action next week, which is absolutely brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed this little mini-series. Um, I really appreciate you joining me. If you want to scour the transfer market, links in the description for five yards, the player ratings, the scout reports, the little graphs of where their strengths are are really, really great. It's completely free. Um, well worth a look. And thanks to them for supporting us. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye-bye.